Hi, Richie. Hi, Sin. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 27 of What, Where, Why? Enemies of Bloodborne. And today we're going to talk about Mergo's Attendance, suggested Ooh. by Derek and Chris. Yay. Yay. So, let's go to the Bloodborne Wiki Mergo's Attendance page. Oh, there's a few of them. There's a chief attendant. There's an attendant on Yeah, the I don't know if, if they mean just the, the regular attendants or the chief attendants or just all of them. We could well, do all of them because they're all, all basically them, the yeah. same. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's start with generally speaking. What is a Mergo attendant? So the Mergo attendants are, they are Fumerians in stylized armor. <laughs> um, it covers most of their body to the point where when you first see them, you might think they're supposed to be like golems or something, but they're actually, they're Fumerians wearing these very, very bulky armored suits. <laughs> the regular attendants are very, very small. They're child sized almost. And their armor is, um, it sort of looks like it's reasonably proportioned to their actual bodies. And they have a sort of tri-cornered hat on the top. Mm -hmm. And they wear, the armor covers all of them. It is covering their face as well. So you just see this like sort of, it's not even blank. It's almost like a grinning face. And they come in a, the regular attendants have a number of varieties that they come in with different weapons. Some of them have whips, some of them have crossbows. And interestingly, quite a lot of them don't actually have any weapons at all. They just wander around. And the main method of attacking you is that if they get close enough to you, they will try to shove you in a hole. But other than that, mm -hmm. they don't actually, they will ignore you. <laughs> There's actually one that will drop items for you, interestingly. How so? Um, right after the bridge where Edgar is, there's a Mergo attendant. And if you mm -hmm. just ignore it, it will wander around and it will start leaving items behind it. Really? Yes. That's so cool. Yeah, we're not sure exactly. We're not, that may be a glitch for all we know, but it happens. And basically all the unarmed ones, as far as I can remember, don't actually attack you. Um, they'll only attack you if you get in their face and start hitting them first, or you block their movement, they'll attack you. But otherwise, they're They, just... like, push you, right? Yeah, but if they don't... Mm -hmm. If they're not actually holding a weapon, they just wander around and basically ignore you. That's cute. They're like, I have no time for this. I'm sorry. I got I'm something busy, to I'm do. I'm busy attending to a Mergo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then there's the chief attendants, where the mm -hmm. armor is stylized to look like a pregnant woman as far as we can tell so mm -hmm. it has this huge huge protruding stomach mm -hmm. and it has the face is um again it's a mask but the the face on the mask looks like it's sort of screaming in agony like it's very very it has this like very very angry it, it's hard to, to explain what it is it looks like this ad emoticon mm -hmm. and Unlike the little ones, these ones are always hostile as soon as they see you. Yeah, they're very yeah. hostile. Yeah, and there's two versions. One of them has an axe and one of them has a chain. And they rush mm -hmm. at you and they will... They have a very similar moveset to the executioners, which suggests that they might even be a similar kind of thing. They'd like the watches, the, the labyrinth... Um, the, the merciless watches and the executioners, it might be the same kind of thing. And mm -hmm. their axe can inflict rapid poison, which is interesting because it's like a Chicago thing. It's like a Thumerian weapon. The little ones, mm -hmm. crossbows, can also do rapid poison to you. You know what I'm thinking? Um, what we're wise, more of a glimpse of each enemy, but yeah. we should probably do a proper Snap Covenant podcast on these at some point because mm -hmm. their armor is really intriguing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And 
So my question is, what is the relationship between the little attendants and the chief attendant? Because I always thought that it's like, oh, the chief attendant is the mom and the little ones are like her kids and they're all helping out with Mirko. I think that the reason like they they look the way they do is they are supposed to look like a like a mother, like a symbolic mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess for reference, like you can remove the in the model view, where you can remove the armor from the chief attendants. Oh, okay. Yeah, and underneath it, they just like a big fat Thumerian. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. The purpose of the attendant seems to be, like, just to attend to Murgo. It looks like they're trying to get Murgo back. Um, this is one of those things where it's confusing about who's actually fighting who. Because it's like, okay, they're attending Murgo, but on whose behalf are they attending Murgo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, are they attending Murgo on behalf of Queen Yarnum, or are they attending Murgo on behalf of Mensis and they're trying to stop us getting to Murgo? And it looks a lot like it is the former because there's a ton of dead healing church corpses down there mm-hmm. with Murgo attendants near them, mm-hmm. which makes it seem like the Murgo attendants were just like killing them as they came through. Like they're all mm-hmm. possibly the attendants came through and killed them and they were already there. Um, the And also like when you encounter Mikolash you shortly after them. And you get the impression like Mikolash is just trapped, like he can't get out because he's got the attendants downstairs and the shadows upstairs. Because <laughs> of the way it's structured, is like there's the attendants downstairs, and then you go a bit further up, and there's the shadows, and then above them is Queen Yarnum. So it's sort of like everyone's coming up to get Murgo back. Do you think the smaller attendants are children? I don't know what they are. It's really weird because like. You you see Thumerians that seem short in other places, mm-hmm. like in the dungeons and in Kanehurst. And then you realize, mm-hmm. no, they're not actually short. It's just that they're really, really bent in half, like in a very unnatural mm-hmm. way. Like their bodies are basically folded mm-hmm. in half down the middle, which makes them look like a short person with a hunchback. Mm-hmm. But the um, the attendants just seem very, very small. And it's, they, I don't know. I don't know if they are. They probably aren't children, really. Let me send you a concept art. Do you feel like the mask represents somebody who's of a younger age, like the way the mask is? Yeah, I think they're meant to look like a mother and a child. Okay. Because that looks like that's the whole basis of Thumerian civilization. Mm -hmm. Is the the relationship, like it's this matriarchal civilization where the power is derived from the child that the queen is carrying. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, a while back, like this whole situation made me think of a whipping boy. Yeah. Can you tell people what that is? Why don't you tell people what it is? I'm shy. No, you need to talk more. No, I don't need to talk ever. I feel like you've gone backwards because this is like how we were in, <laughs> in like two years ago when we were like, "I'm shy," and then they gradually go into Richard. Shut the fuck up, bitch! Talk when I tell you can talk. Continue. <laughs> Sin, I- I've been wondering what is a whipping boy. Well, I can read you from Wikipedia. Certainly. A a whipping boy was supposedly a boy educated alongside a prince in early modern Europe who received corporal punishment for the prince's transgression in his presence. The prince was not punished himself because his royal status exceeded that of his tutor. Seeing a friend punished would provide an equivalent motivation not to repeat the offense. Yeah, so it made me think, like, man, Murgo's a real troublemaker. He has, like, 20 whipping boys, you know? What 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 japes do you think Murgo gets up to as a calcified fetus? <laughs> <laughs> At that point, when I was thinking that, I didn't know that Murgo was a calcified <laughs> fetus yet. <laughs> I didn't know about Miyazaki's obsessions with dead babies. <laughs> But we know Murgo has like psychic powers, so you think Murgo is just like wrecking shit around Tumor Eye Hill. Just <laughs> yes. like making like things fall off tables and things. 
Uh, or, you know, like Queen Yarnum is like, she's like cooking chili and he makes something happen and the whole chili just explodes on her beautiful <laughs> wedding dress. Yeah. Her beautiful wedding dress she wears every day. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. what it is when we meet her. It's not blood. It's just like chili. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. I completely misread the situation. I thought that was blood. <laughs> <laughs> And that big monolith in the middle, that's just the stove. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it all comes together. Uh, now it's a 2020 podcast. Oh god. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. Um, where are the Mergo attendants? They are only in the Nightmare of Mensis. Hmm. They're only on one floor of the Nightmare of Mensis. They're just down the bottom, uh, just after. They're in between Edgar and Mikolash and nowhere else. Okay. Um, and why are the Margo attendants? Well, we kind of covered that. They're like, they're probably yeah. trying to get, they're either trying to get Mergo back or they were like just protecting Mergo and maybe Mikolash got by. Mm-hmm. But I think you have to assume that, that, Mikolash and Mensis brought Mergo there, and then the Thumerians followed. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. So that means some Thumerians are like, yeah, Mikolash, we'll work with you with the whole Mensis thing, whatever. We yeah. just want to sell them the one reborn. Yeah. But some other Thumerians are like, what the F are y'all doing? They literally just kidnapped Mergo. We got to get him back. So there's like a difference of opinion, you know, between the yeah. Thumerians. Yeah, we've talked about that. I know it's it's interesting yeah. that it's manifesting here as well. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to add about the Merkel attendants? Um, the big ones have unused moves, but it's not that interesting. Oh, oh actually, they both moves. have unused moves. The little ones have an unused move that's they have a lance that's shaped like a spiral. And they they have it that's paired with a shield, and they just like poke you with it hiding hiding behind the shield and if you um you can like guard break them and stuff like you could with any other shield enemy and the big ones they actually have the moves that the right keepers from the dungeons have where they hold a skull Mm -hmm. in one hand and they use it to make this like purple aoe effect Mm -hmm. and those are not in the game anymore but they still work if you mod them back in Richie. Thank you, Sin. I guess that's it. It was a yeah. pretty short one. Yeah. Alright. Um, so I guess we'll see everybody later. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.